Welcome to Geek Archaeology. That's kind of a nice thing to be able to say this time. Anyway, today I'm reviewing Recovery of an MMO Junkie. This is an anime series that aired in the fall of 2017, and it has a rather unusual premise in a couple of different ways. Uh, it is about a young woman who quits her job and lives at home uh, alone and ends up getting involved in an MMO and playing a lot of, uh, a lot of this MMO and she ends up kind of falling for a guy in the MMO, although well, that's kind of complicated. Because the gal, basically, she plays a guy in the MMO, she falls for a girl character who's played by a guy, right? So there's a whole gender-bent thing, which raised a lot of eyebrows when it came out. Also the fact that the main character is what's called a NEET, uh, not in education, employment, or training, N-E-E-T, um, or kind of a shut-in. And the fact that we have a, a, a main character who's a shut-in, and where the show doesn't really punish her for being a neat, um, you know, no one's looking down on her for that, at least initially in the show. So folks were curious about where it would go with those two themes. So let's talk about a few things here. Um, let me start with the animation, because I always like to, to talk about the animation a bit, and unfortunately, this is one of the ways in which the show um, isn't the best. So a lot of characters are off model quite a bit in MMO Junkie, where just, you know, eye shape changes and face shape changes and things along those lines. Um, this is not the highest budgeted show you'll ever see. That said, um, there's a lot to juggle in this show, which folks often uh, have a tough, tough time realizing that you know, you've got all the characters in real life and their anime version of that, and all the characters in the MMO, so you have character designs for all of those and keeping track of all of them, uh, plus the fact that you have you know, all the, the settings in the backgrounds for real life versus all the MMO environments. So there's a lot to juggle in the show, uh, you know, production-wise, but it does... Uh, it does jump out occasionally, where you see characters and, you know, from one shot to the other, the character design is obviously drawn a little bit differently uh, for different characters. Fortunately, they did a very smart thing where the character designs are quite differentiated. So, both in terms of hair color, hair style, um, heights of characters, things like that, because of the differentiation there, that, you know, those slight animation errors, and sometimes they're a little more than slight, um, aren't as noticeable, and they don't really detract much from the experience. Uh, overall, the animation is, I would say, um, above average, but not amazing. So, the uh, in terms of how characters move and how characters um, uh, interact with each other and facial expressions and so forth, it is what you'd expect from an anime series. Um, they do spend a lot of good time on character expression, making sure that you really understand what's going on with the character's emotions, which is very important for a romantic series, or a series with a romantic element like that. So, good on them there. Um, but there's not a lot of, you know, gorgeous shots of characters running or leaping or things along those lines. It's, it's not that kind of a show. And overall, the direction of the show, I would describe as clean, right? where you understand what's going on, um, it's never confusing. There are some moments where they do some really neat things and there's some quick um, cuts to various elements of the story, particularly having to deal with the main character's past and why she left her old job. Uh, and how they jump and, and cut between that and some of the other, other things give you just enough information, but they don't dwell on it. And I really liked how they, they did that. I thought it was very effective. So, um, you know, no problems with the direction, but I don't, think I don't think there's anything there that will kind of really, really blow you away, which is fine. So this is a romantic series about, um, you know, uh, interactions between characters. So what are the characters like? This is one of the strengths of the show, fortunately, is that they spend a good amount of time on various characters without going too far. I should mention, this is a 10 episode anime series. There is a, an 11th episode, kind of an OVA, which I have not seen yet. Like it just aired, it just dropped today and I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. So that is a thing. I'm not quite sure what goes on there, but certainly episode 10, you know, completes the main storyline. It's important to note because that's not, not a lot of time. And especially for a, a character who is in an MMO, very social space, they do a great job of developing our protagonist and the guy uh, and giving us some time with the side characters, but not over, never overwhelming the show with any of those other side characters. 
um, I really felt for the protagonist and what she was going through. And I really understood where she was coming from. Um, they, do, they do a good job of explaining that like she's exhausted from this old job. And I won't get into any spoilers on that. But basically, you know, there's a reason why she quit. And um, uh, without getting... I mean, um, it, it works. Like, it works to inform her current behavior. And that's the important thing. You want to understand why characters behave the way they do. Especially if they're behaving in a way that's unusual for society. So you definitely see that. You see what she is doing there. Um, same thing for the, the guy, the romantic interest. Where you understand to a decent extent where he's coming from and why he behaves the way he behaves. And then you have side characters who are different from each other. They have their own you know, foibles and things. But we don't really delve much into that because that's not important. Um, I should point out that... Um, the gender swap thing is not relevant. And that's actually a refreshing thing for me because the characters basically all acknowledge that, oh, sometimes people, you know, play different genders. So what? Right? Like, um, you know, if a guy plays a girl, it's like, oh, oh, you play, oh, okay, fair enough. You know, it, it's, we've all been there. We've all had that experience online. So... Um, for the characters themselves, that is um, essentially a non-issue. And some folks were kind of hoping this would be a big um, statement on, on gender fluidity, but it is, that is not what it's, what it's going for here. Um, uh, what it is going for here is more about the aspect of being a neat. And this is significant because, uh, again, I'm, try I'm trying, to, trying to avoid spoilers, but it does delve to some extent into the what it's like when you are a shut-in who doesn't have a job and what you feel that that does to people around you what you think your friends think of you right your kind of social obligations in that sense um, that does weigh to an extent on the main character's mind so there is some interesting depth there about that and there's some behavior that the character engages in that would otherwise be um, um, stereotypical anime behavior but weird behavior in real life things we're kind of used to seeing but you know like, why would you really do that which makes sense in this context when you've been when you are on the edges of society in that sense or when you do have a very different reputation than the average person you know, that does change how you behave. So I do, um, I do think they, they did an appreciable job of explaining that. Again, 10 episodes, there's nothing hugely complex or detailed there, but it is present. So good on them for doing that. Um, and that kind of really leads into the whole believability question. Um, what, one of the things I like is that this is recognizably um, done with real people in the sense that you know, these all feel like actual human beings playing this game. You know, some of them are, um, some of them spend more time with the game than others, right? But you, you get the sense that these characters aren't stereotypes. You know, they are not there to fill in these particular roles. Just we've met the, you know, the responsible kind of leader type. We've met the one who just kind of hangs out and has fun. Um, but they all feel like they also have jobs or classes to go to and so forth and so on. And that is part of those elements, right? That, that is part of the show. Um, so I really appreciated that aspect of it, where I, I think they did a, a very fine job with the, uh, the believability of the, the world, especially because you have you know, real characters and their MMO sort of counterparts. That needs to be grounded to a decent extent. Either spend no time with those other characters, or establish that they are real people so that we can contrast the two. Uh, and again, I think they did a, a fine job there. Do you want to mention uh, voice acting here? I listened to, I, I'm not aware of an English dub of this. Funimation's probably dubbing it. Um, in fact, I think they are dubbing it. But anyway, I, I listened to the Japanese version of this, and um, I, I definitely did appreciate the voice acting here, especially because it doesn't go too over the top. Uh, anime voice acting can be a little shrill at times, 
and they and, and there are sometimes it's a comedy so there are sometimes where there are some over the top line reads but that is because the character is kind of freaking out in her own head or his own head and so you get that you know that that um, over the top reaction which is which is good um, but in general they play it I don't want to say they play it straight in the sense that it's just you know it's straight but they don't overplay it the voice acting feels more real than you get in a lot of anime series where characters are pushing a lot of emotion into their voices and there's there can be certain overacting in some of these anime series and it's definitely not here so you know good job there as, as best as i can tell with my ear for you know japanese voices and emotion but i thought they did a, a fine job there uh, so overall, you know, one of the nice things about MMO Junkie is that it's short. You can just try it out. It is a comedy. It does have a strong romance element in it, which is woven in. Uh, there are some dramatic moments and some relatively serious moments uh, dealing with the characters and how they interact. And I think if you're, you know, if you're into that genre, this definitely fits into that genre very, very well. Be aware it is not a commentary on MMOs and video games. You know, video games in this is just a plot device. You know, it, this isn't about video games being good or bad. It is just there. And it's another thing that I kind of appreciate about the show. Um, so if that's the kind of thing you're looking for, um, I think this is definitely worth a shot. But I hope you found this interesting. And until next time, I hope you will also dig deeper into your favorite stuff.